Hi, my name is Arsene, I'm a leash based filmmaker, videographer and a couple other things. And I'm planning on making a documentary called Clear Lake, about a lake I like of the sheep blooms. And I thought as I went along, I'd probably try to do a series of vlogs based on me trying to make a documentary and see how that goes. Uh, this first one being about the start of the process. There's an area of the Schlee Blooms called Clear Lake. It's a pretty weird place I've been going to since I was a kid. And it's got a mystique there that's always fascinated me and that I've tried to emulate in a lot of things I've done. It was while I was editing a short film I met up there that was partially an attempt to do that where I just had the idea of what if I just tackled it head on and just made a documentary about the lake. So first things first, I have an idea. A kind of broad direction to start moving out on to look for the film I subconsciously feel I can make here. And I didn't want to run too fast into doing synopsises and scripts. So for a long while I just kind of did visual exploration where I just kind of just drew stuff intuitively and without overthinking it and meant stuff together from photography and video I'd already shot up there. Like these mock-ups uh, based on the BFI flip side Blu-ray covers, which I don't know why that made sense to do, but it did and I just kind of went with it. And then just yeah, quick watercolors and inks and just all these different things to not overthink it and just kind of fish around for a direction to take the film in. It was kind of like let my subconscious do all the work and then reverse engineering a way to make the film from that. Uh, I really like the visual exploration, the fact you're just so loose and you're kind of pulling directly from the imagination rather than thinking about what's feasible or what's physically possible to catch on film. And I was also going through all my old stuff from Clear Lake, just all the paintings and drawings and photography I'd done in the place. And I felt that I think if I brought in all this stuff, I'd kind of have a scale of time representing the film that might make it feel quite cool. Some stories start with characters, some stories start with an ending. But with this film, I think the most important thing is to start with a vibe, which I'm starting to draw out through these visual explorations. The reason this movie is vibe first is because the whole movie is kind of a project to tune into that frequency of peculiar mystery that I really got from this place with the hope being maybe I'll have a creative breakthrough and kind of create a mystery and a sense of atmosphere in my work much better if I go back to the source like this. So I'm kind of have this in the sidelines while I work on other stuff but I'm starting to get the feeling this should be some kind of loose weird semi-stage documentary and of course I'm thinking of it while I'm watching and reading and doing other stuff always on the lookout for things I can bring into this and things I can take influence from. And yeah eventually I realised that what I'm trying to do is basically Orson Welles F for Fake meets David Gladwell's Requiem for a Village. Now I'd like to have some less obscure more elevator pitch friendly touchstones. It's Die Hard in a Garden Centre. That would be great. It's Pulp Fiction meets on Colleen Kuhn. I will at least a good cod of hook and sheet, quarter pounder they cost, e paras. But at the same time this is helpful for me because I know if I was to crossbreed this film with this, I would you wouldn't get the film I was trying to make. That's for fake is an incredibly dexterous Orson Welles documentary on the nature of fakery. And it's made from pretty much nothing. He shot footage while he was working around Europe and he took footage from several different documentaries. And he did something I really like, and I don't know the proper word for it, but I call it alchemy editing where he kind of crafted in this beautifully fluid, far-reaching documentary that has such a scale to it. And it's just so witty and fun and alive, and I really want something like that. Now it's time for an introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of introduction, this is a film about trickery. I really love editing, and I love the challenge of taking all this different material and crafting something that's more some of its parts. And Effort Fake is one of the best films I could think of that does that. I reckon for Village definitely is a vibe I'm going for. I've been fascinated with the front cover for years and I always liked the film I kind of imagined from seeing the front cover. And then when I actually saw the film last year I thought it was incredible. It's basically an old man's recollections of the rural English countryside area he grew up in. And usually that could end up in old fashioned or quaint or nostalgic but here it's just got a real sharpness to it. I think it is up there at how green was my valley for being one of the best uh, pastoral melancholy films. It's got a avant-garde tendencies with its editing and shot composition. So it's something that's so kind of old and new at the same time. I find that really fascinating and it's such a cool mix. And now that I'm starting to find a direction how to go on this, I can start gathering material for the script. Got this little notebook and I just keep writing pretty much any ideas I have in there. Shots, cuts, motifs, uh, scenes, just it all goes into this notebook and I'm constantly writing out stuff. And pretty frequently I start categorizing, seeing what kind of goes together, seeing what kind of themes I keep bringing up and must be important to the film. I'm pretty sure this pro approach came from reading a book of interviews with David Lynch where he said he kind of did a similar thing where he just said yeah, he'd have an idea for a moment and then you should create an idea for another moment and then you wait for another idea and maybe every once in a while you shift through them and kind of find the ones that are working and try and use them to build into more moments and then when you have 70 or 80 of those you have a script hoping a form will start to emerge on how to make the movie. I'm really glad I did it this way rather than maybe start really soon with like a pitch document with all the beats I want to hit like it was a PowerPoint presentation. I think this one kind of let all these 
weird, odd flavors kind of come true and just give me like a million different threads I could kind of try weave into something. So eventually I go and do a first draft where it's a bit contrived. So I have the idea to do this weird uh, bullet point draft. It's only three pages long and it's just uh, the kind of movie beat by beat and bullet points. But it's so helpful to kind of just have everything mapped out and just be able to kind of stand back and see how the thing's shaping up as a whole. Which I then used to make first draft take two, uh, which was pretty much just filling out the bullet point one, which kind of flowed in a really nice way. And by now I find like I'm so mentally kind of keyed into what I'm trying to do that I can just throw in ideas and scenes and just work stuff out on the fly. Although that said, I do tend to break apart and disassemble my script a lot. I remember one thing I picked up in college is we were told to just do the three drafts and then leave it but I do three drafts and then rewrite from memory and I found when you rewrite from memory you kind of instinctively pick out the most important bits and usually kind of write it better and then you just go back to the other one and figure out if you missed anything important and I'm probably going to do that a lot with this just to kind of keep churning up the sand and seeing what happens. At the minute, this story is a bit stiff and a bit contrived. Um, it's just me kind of mostly parroting stuff from better natural storytellers than me that were up there. But this is going to be forged by life when it comes to shooting it. And hopefully by even out up there, I'll gather up enough incidental material to start swapping out for my more contrived ways of saying the same thing. So yeah, now to keep working on the script, going back through the notes and making sure I haven't left any gold in the sluice. And I'm also going to try to keep this kind of fluid because one of the advantages of doing something so small on my own is that I can radically rejig the film as I go and kind of come up with new ideas and reshape it. So yeah, after all that, I have a script. And I'm currently in the process of shooting the film but I do want to keep doing these vlogs in different aspects and the next one's probably going to be on the equipment I'm using if you're interested.